Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Mob Vlog, Wednesday, February 9th, Redna's Day, 2 p.m. here in Vegas, 4 o'clock in Chicago. But uh, either way, we're here to talk about the Chicago Outfit Mob Bosses. Do a little flashback to today. So, uh, welcome back, guys. Mob Vlog. Red we met. How are you doing today? I am doing well. It's a sunshiny day and we got up to 65 degrees. <laughs> well, that sounds wonderful. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Did you see the dentist? Did you see the dentist? <laughs> you got a problem, dude. I mean, what, you what are you talking about? What are you what are you talking about, Red? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm talking about <laughs> I can't what? point over there. The hell? I'm talking about. What are you talking about, Red? What are you talking about? What are you talking about, guy? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, my Billy Bob teeth. <laughs> hey, you know what? If you can't smile, what the hell is the point, right? What's the point of any of this if we're not going to smile? We got to smile. You know, so Even if you have one tooth missing, <laughs> right. so um, even even if you had a gold tooth, yes. So uh, it's good to good to see you guys. Welcome back, everybody. Gardino Inc. It's good to see you. all two customs. Scott H, uh, Don Berlin, Bobby Bag of Donuts, William Kirchmayer. By the way, guys, if you're tuning in and you've never been to the show before, just jump ahead five minutes and we'll get into the meat of things. OK, but. But, but the prescribers, way too important not to say hello to. Kathy Jean from Peoria, good to see you. Um, welcome. And uh, Keith Osborne, David Grimpy, Sean Pender, Ken O'Connell, uh, checking in from Arlington Heights. Chain Weaver, it's good to see you. David Coromir from uh, Canada, welcome in. And, GC. Uh, uh, hey, Lockport, Illinois, Jean Ledesma. And uh, we'll do, do, let's see, Fern V, Fern V, uh, welcome in, Kevio. O, it's good to see all of you guys, uh, it's good to see everybody here, Bob P. Cole, if I missed anybody, I'm sorry, Ted Ferguson, uh, Duke of Dunhurst, Brett, hey, Duke of Dunhurst is in here, <laughs> awesome, uh, Bobby Bag of Donuts, uh, so it's good to see you guys, happy chicks, uh, welcome in, Kiddo, how are you? Pete Byron. Uh, everybody's here today. Everybody's here. Even John Wallace from uh, John Wallace from Albuquerque. So I got to tell you, I got to tell you what happened the other day, Red. It's funny. So this is funny. The other day, I'm meeting up with a friend of mine and we're going to go out and have a cigar. And we went to this cigar shop here in town and it's, I walked in, I swear to God, it was like the it was like the it was like the Armenian mob was in this place. Okay, <laughs> all right. It's just that's that's what it looked like, and I'm not being I'm not I'm I'm not being racist or anything. Okay, I'm just saying that it was they looked like a bunch of mobbed up. Anyway, I said to my buddy, I said, "Hey, it looks really busy at this place. Why don't we go down the street to this, uh, another joint?" And I found it on Google Maps, so we drove over there. We pulled up, and I'm getting out of the car. I opened my car door to get out of the car. And a guy pulled up in there and he's opening his car door getting out. Okay. And, and, and he locks eyes with me and he just froze. And I, I kind of froze too. Like what, well, what he's looking at me and I'm looking at him like, do I know you? And he's like, you just shot. I know you. And, and I said to him, I go, uh, uh, yeah, bro. And he, he's like, you do that podcast. I go, oh, mob vlog. He's like, oh my God. He's like, it's you. I can't believe it, man. He's like, I, I listen to your show all the time. So I, it was funny. Uh, that was really funny. We're walking through the through the store. Anyway, if you're listening, Joseph uh, Scalise, I uh, just uh, wanted to say a quick shout out to you. And uh, you said a couple of shows mentioned, uh, mentioned this show, Red, recently. Yes. Uh, Gary Jenkins did. He was very grateful for the show he put up. He did an interview with me. He complimented you. Um, Anthony Martini and Faces of the Forgotten. You know, he shows tombstones and everything. 
he he said mentioned you and and how grateful he was for your show and a lot of people did a lot of well, people did well hey i i uh, uh i gotta say gary jenkins which which i interviewed him uh once on the show was a, 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 a i was a great guest he was a fantastic guy to to uh i really like it and i listen to some of his uh podcasts every once in a while if i'm looking researching a subject or something uh that that uh about kansas city's connections to vegas I, i'll listen to different things that he puts up so well he did we did a thing on he did a thing with me on bob cooley but he used your thumbnail <laughs> oh that's cool that's all good um no, that's all good. And and uh yeah, Greg Polly just finished the uh <laughs> finished your Greg, book. Did you like it? Right. If you liked it, good, bad, or indifferent, write me a review on Amazon, would you please? Good, bad, or indifferent. I'd appreciate it. And uh, you know, if you uh if you guys want to get a a, a book. Uh, go to redwoodmet.com. You can check that on the bottom of the screen. I just stuck a little ticker down there. So with the address, if you guys want to check it out. So let's talk. Let's talk about the Chicago mob bosses today. And um, one question that was always asked uh, was the breakdown of the hierarchy of the Chicago outfit. Right? And who was the boss when? And, uh, and, and Joey Ayupa. I'd love to go hunting deep in the woods with you. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, I noticed, Adam, almost every review uh, on, on the outfit bosses, they seem to skip Phil uh, Dorisio. They don't show him as the boss. It was only like three years, but they seem to skip him. Like uh, Michael Francis did, he skipped him. And I made a comment below, and it started a shitstorm, man. <laughs> you're known for doing that. Uh, <laughs> you're kind of getting a reputation. Yeah, for I am. Shitstorms. Um, well, it, 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 is Bob Cooley still alive? Anybody uh, big two yes, he He's quite alive. He's trying yeah. to. He's trying to do a movie. Gotcha. Gotcha. But he doesn't do podcasts unless you give him money. <laughs> you know, you got to, here's the thing about, you know, about a podcast and something that is specifically genre like this. You have to have something to offer, a book, uh, a something, right? That's how YouTubers are, are you know, uh, make, they have their side deals. You know, I was just talking to a friend before, uh, before we started this, I was on the phone with a friend. And uh, he uh, watches uh, YouTube and goes to uh, listen to psychiatrists about certain subject matter because, he, you know, it's, not, it's right there on YouTube. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, they and they, they offer side courses and things like that. So th that's the point of it is they all have side businesses. If you have to have something else to offer. Yes, I did. I did. I could go to Sandstone for several people. And Sandstone Prison, Bobby. What was the question? He asked. He asked me, "Did I ever go to visit different mob guys in Sandstone Prison up in oh. Sandstone, Minnesota?" And Sandstone, I did Minnesota. Several. Okay. Um. So so let's get into this, guys. Uh, we're just going to jump back. This is a quickly. This is actually the third video that I made with Frank, and somebody asked. I think it was Michael Splotcher. Well, you'll see it in the video. So, um, so, so en enjoy this and, uh, let's put it up there. There we go. Here we go. Third video. This is before we wrote the lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> Michael seems to start threads on different things. He still hasn't got, got he's 57 years old. He still hasn't gotten over his, his local Welcome instructor. to having coffee with Collider. Hit that hit that su su subscribe button. I have a problem saying that word. Not that I'm stupid, I just can't pronounce the word. Uh, we're up to about 86 prescribers. 
86. And uh, I hope you enjoy what I'm doing. And there's a lot to learn from me. And now I'm not going to be 1,000% on the money. Don't forget I'm 81 years old. You know, you, it's wonder that I got this memory as I have it. So anyway, when you're, I'm ready for any questions you'd like to ask me. So let's get going. The first question I'm going to answer is from a young man. His name is Michael Splacho. I happen to know his father real well. Thanks, Greg. And his uncle real well. He had a question for me. And I know he wasn't calling me a liar. I understand where he gets his information. I'm sure he don't get it from his mother because I know his father wouldn't talk to his mother about personal things. So he chases history like everybody else does. It's common. I've lived that life. I know that life. I know the characters. Uh, I don't want to offend this kid. He, he was just a young boy when his father passed. Anyway, he asked the question about the West Side crew. I can answer that question easily. Joe Lombardo always belonged to Jack Cerrone. All right, let's pause right there. So Joe Lombardo belonged to Jackie Cerrone always. Yes. From the beginning. Joe Lombardo was the Grand Avenue crew. And then run from the east side to the west side. There's not much east side. So it was all west side. And it went into the suburbs. Joe started out as a crap player, shooting craps, uh, putting money out on juice. And he was a good earner. He's a good thief, too. Joe, if you told him to do something, he would do it. Unlike, I think this kid might be referring to Michael, to Johnny DeFranzo. There's two different people. Johnny was with Jack also. But if Jack took one of something done on the heavy level, he wouldn't go to Johnny because Johnny would have to get somebody. Joe could do it himself. That's the difference in the characters. Joe was way above Johnny as far as stature. They call him a clown. You know why everybody knows why. Because he liked to clown around. But he didn't like you to clown around with him. I know Joey since in the 50s. I know him when he was a startup guy, stand-up guy, and uh, making money. And uh, did I like him? I tolerated him. Let me put it like this. Now I'm going to tell you something else a lot of people don't know. Joey Lombardo and Tony Splacho were made approximately the same time in the 70s. Hey, it's Brian from Samcart. And if you're someone who's thinking about Commercial. making passive income online with an online. Unbelievable. That I know. Tony was much more higher up than Joe. That I could guarantee you. With Tony's own words to my ears, because I challenged Tony on it when I was in Vegas. I said, what is it? Is it Joe bigger than you or are you bigger than Joe? He said, Frankie, because I'm in Vegas and Joe's in Chicago. He's where all the guys are. He's in charge. I have to take orders from him. He said, well, vice versa, it'd be the other way around. If we were both in Chicago, I'd be Joe's boss. And reason. By the way, I just want to point this out to the, everybody who's watching. And thank you uh, uh, very much, uh, uh, Greg Hart. And thank you very much. Uh, Cindy Workman. It's good to see you in the house uh, uh, here today, Cindy. Cindy Cindy never misses a show. Um, look at the size of Frank's mitts right there. His hands are gigantic. He yeah. was Frank wasn't like you see pictures of him and I next to each other. He could come up to you know you're on me or something, right? His hands though. They were like as big as my hands. It's crazy. Oh, you put a hand over your face, probably. <laughs> it's crazy. No, oh, it's crazy. I just anyway. I don't know if anybody ever rec uh, ever noticed that or not. The reason why I challenged him on that because I know Tony was with Joey Ayupa. He was the man, 
And Joey loved Tony, and he loved his brother Michael. There's pictures all over to show it. So who's he going to pick, Lombardo or Tony? He's going to pick Tony. So when they made Jack Cerrone the boss, because Joe retired, Tony was very upset. He was because he was looking not for Jack to be the boss. Jack's a difficult guy, Jack Cerrone. Now, I could tell you, I know this for a fact, from Tony's mouth to my ears. Now, you want to know who are the bosses? I'm talking to everybody now. This is what I could tell you, what I know. It's a confusing thing to most people. From 1960 to 1970 or 72, the boss was Paul Rica. Paul the waiter Rica. They called him the waiter because he waited. Okay, let's pause right there. I I have heard, I have heard that they called him the waiter because he he was a waiter. Somebody challenged this in a comment once that that's not why his name was the waiter. I heard he was the, the same thing as Frank because he would wait. He was patient. He would wait. He wouldn't do any knee jerk reactions. Okay. All right. Let's keep it going until he got you. That's what Paul. Nice guy, cheap as a son of a bitch, but a nice guy. <laughs> they retired, or he retired himself. Al Cap I mean, Tony Accardo, he retired himself. Now, these characters I mentioned, these last names, these guys are from Al Capone era. The old 42 gang, Taylor Street. Okay, pause right there for just a second. Um, just a quick, Gary Jenkins, how are you? Good to see you today. Hey, Gary. Uh, Thanks for the mention the other day in your show. Uh, and uh, Leanne, rolling along, it's good to see you too. I just, guys, it's just how the show goes, all right? You, you, we we got to interrupt every once in a while to say hello to people. So, all right, let's go back to this now, all right? So, so. I love this grin. <laughs> Here we go. And they went, they were with Al Capone. So, when he went... When he died, he died of cancer. I think somewhere in 72 or whatever it was. But Tony was already placed in Vegas in 1972. You got that? Don't get confused because sometimes I get confused. Because don't forget, there's a lot of people involved in my life. Pause again. Um, it is confusing because it's like Tony Accardo's the boss. And then you got Sam Giancana, who's the boss, and you got Joe Lombardo's a boss, and Jackie Cerrone's a boss, and it it's like everybody's a freaking boss. Well, wait a second, Adam. I can explain that. Accardo was semi-retired, and every so often Cerrone used to go back in. Cerrone actually went back in when um, uh, Milwaukee Phil went to prison. He went back in and had to take over again. So he was like the second in command to Ocardo. And Got Chicago, it. and he made him the boss. You know, he'd bring him in to take the place of somebody that went to prison or somebody that expired. Got it. So, so they like stepped in and out. Yes. All well, right, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of indictments came down, a lot of everything else. You know, people had to take a well, walk. Go to go to prison and have to come back and all that, right? John Ramsey, thanks so much for the super sticker, guy. Um, appreciate look, I sound like red now. All right, guy. <laughs> Let's keep rolling here. So that's when Jack Cerrone became the boss. Now we go back to Milwaukee Phil. Do I know Milwaukee Phil yet? He was a nut. Tony was nervous around him. Tony told me, when this guy talks, Frankie, he fucking growls. All right. So he growls when he talks. What did you think? He Milwaukee may have growled felt. at him because he had some type of business that he, or dispute with him, or maybe he had to be over him, but he didn't growl at everybody. Because when I met him with the whole crew down in Grand and Ogden, he was, he talked in a gravelly voice, but he wasn't like mean. It wasn't growling like I'm going to tear your throat out. 
Don Vito, Cassio Ferro. Uh, Carta was the boss. Others were the front bosses. Yes. Uh, thank you. The day to day bosses. Got it. Got it. So, so, so you, it's like you got you got your your manager, and then you have your your general manager, and then you have your 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 managers below that, right? And then their employees. Okay. All right. Let's keep rolling with this. He says, but I got to listen to him. He says, he's my boss. Now, Tony started out. I could tell you how Tony got right to the to the top. Tony started hanging around I got by the name of Saint. Vincent and Cyril. We call him Saint. Saint used to be Joey Ayupa's personal driver. Personal driver. Tony hooked up with Saints. Turk. Turk was involved. James Tortorella. We call him Turk. I stole with Turk. I know Turk. I didn't know his wife. I know who she was, Doodles. But it's not my business to be her friend. He's he stole with friend. the saint, too. Not his wife. <laughs> not Tony's wife. Hello? He's what? He stole with the saint, too. Severo. Uh, and Severo. Yeah. It wasn't wasn't Saint also the one who was there at the chicken shack when I, uh, uh, when, when he set up Billy? Uh, uh, right. Right? Or was, was it Jimmy? Himself. I can't remember. I get the two confused. But he was there in the car. I remember Frank said that, that he saw him there, too. Okay. Oh, goodbye. I'll see you later. That's the way I treated it. If you want to come on in and wait for him, have coffee. I'll sit in the car. You never know what these bras will say. <laughs> now, that's hilarious. <laughs> you never know what these. Come on. No, what, sir, what do you sure think? What do you think he was inferring to that? What do you think he's inferring to that? You don't want to go into another guy's house when he's not home, and and, and have coffee as his wife's going to ask you. You want to sit and have some coffee? What's she going to say? You know, to him? She's gonna she, say, you know, if she doesn't like you or something said that she doesn't like, she's liable to turn around and tell her husband or her boyfriend he made a pass at me. Now yeah, you're yeah, right, right. Yeah. See, it's smart. This is good advice right here. This is really good advice. Mm -hmm. All right. So now you're getting the right story. So when Phil dies, I think Tony was sort of relieved to get rid of this guy. The guy was nuts. He was a mean man. So then they put Tony in Vegas. And you know what his functions were. I'll get to that another time. But that's basically the tree. Now you had Tietz Pataglia. You had Joe Ferriola. You had... You had many guys that were made men. I don't call them made. We never have referred to them as made guys. That's the terminology they use in New York. We used to call them stashes. He's a stash. I mean, higher upper. That's the terms we use. Uh, these guys weren't the kind of guys you wanted to play with, tease with. They were very temperamental people. And I was very temperamental myself. I didn't like nicknames. You think you could call Tony the ant? <laughs> You'd be dead if you call him the ant. You think you could call Joey the clown? Like you've seen in the movie, you think that's funny? He'd show you how funny he was. You don't play like that. You talk behind their back, you use that terms. Okay, so I, I'm just going to interrupt because I, I got to throw this in there. And I don't think I've ever told this story, all right? And I don't think that, I don't think that Joe... Frank's brother would mind if I told this story, which, by the way, I got to tell you guys the most hilarious thing that Joe Collada said to me the other day. So I was on the phone with him and we were talking and and he and he said, you know, Adam, the big difference between you and I, the big major difference. And I said to him, no, Joe, what what's the big difference? And he said, when you joke, you joke a little. And and I sit, I'm sitting there and I'm like, you joke, you joke a little. Me, I joke a lot. <laughs> you joke a little, I joke a lot. Oh my right. god! I, I, he's got to have been doing this his whole life, his whole yeah, life. Yeah. I, you had to, have, Joe. You had to have come up with that when you were ten or something, and you've just been doing this the whole. Time. Don't tell me that it took you. So you were 55 or something to realize that line. Because that's hilarious. It's just, it's hilarious. Okay, I'm sorry. Back to the video. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. The story. Quickly, the story. The glasses. So when 
when when Frank and I started uh, in, in 17, working together in 17, the um, one of the vault videos, you guys can go back and watch it. I, actually, I, you know what? It's not. I cut it out of the vault video. I didn't even put it up in the vault video. Because I figured, I thought it might might have gotten Frank mad. It was his first interview, and anyway, during the interview, he said um, that when he was a kid, he used to get into fights a lot, and he said one of the reasons was they used to call him nicknames that he didn't like, and the nickname was Four Eyes. Okay, because he had thick glasses, they called him Coke bottle eyes too, and he got into I fights. I heard him over call this. that behind his back. So we're sitting in. Uh, in a van doing a tour together <laughs> and it's at the end of the tour that I, I, I kid you not this is this, this is a true story the end of the end of the tour he brought up nicknames and it was me a driver frank and two couples and he brought up nicknames oh tony's nickname was this and that 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 that, that right and I said to him, I said, I heard you didn't like your nickname when you were younger. And he said, what's that? And I said, you know, with the, you used to get in fights in school. And he looks at me with this, like, stare. He's like, Don't what are you, you talking dare. about? Don't well, he's you like, dare. what are you talking about? And, and I'm like, you know, the name they used to call you that you didn't like. I don't want to say it, right? And he goes, what name? And I go, I don't want to say you might get, you know, it's like, this is what I'm saying, right? I don't know. And I go, Frankie four eyes. Oh my God. Oh my God. Like he, he, his, he went six shades of red. Okay. I mean, just like, and I'm sitting there going, Oh my God, the roof's about to blow off the top of this vehicle. Right. Like I said, well, he just, he gave me a look that was just like, I swear. I was like, he's, he's pissed. Like I just, I just touched some things that I should not have like gone anywhere. And he's like, anyway, I get, so, so we let the people get back to the, the hotel. We let the people out and then Frank and I closed the doors and the drivers just drive around the back. And Frank says, why'd you say that? And I was like, I, I, I said, where, where'd you even hear that? And I, and I was like, it was in one of your books or something. I must've read. And he said, that's not in any of my books. And I said, well, maybe it was in, you know, your video somewhere, an interview. I've never he told, told that. you about it. He told you about it. Is it one of his stories? No, 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 no. It, it was in, it was in the, uh, uh, the vault videos, the, the Robert Allen interviews. Okay. Right. Here, look, um, let me, I'll wrap this. Uh, it's, it's, it doesn't matter. I don't need to show it, but anyway. It took him a week, and I didn't call him. It took him a week until he finally called me, and he, he was like, you did the right thing by not calling me and staying away from me. Because when I get mad like that, he goes, the, the best thing to do is to, is to stay away. I said to him, okay, fair enough. I, he said, now I... I and I didn't call him that. It's not like I called him that. I just said, like, wow, this you was something you it? were called. You mentioned it? Like, I like take it, it wasn't, wasn't, wasn't big on apologies. <laughs> so, so no, anyway, it, it, after, like I said, after a few days, we got on the phone, and, and he said to me, I talked to somebody, a friend of mine, and he said, and I talked about, you know, your, what you said. And, uh, and, and, and they told me, you know, that you probably didn't mean, mean it in a, in a bad way. And, uh, and, and I was like, I didn't, I, I didn't at all. I didn't at all. But I got to tell you, like, that was something that it hit, know, a nerve. It wow, hit a nerve. Wow. It took a minute to, to get over about that. So anyway, that little nickname comment made me think about this. Um, but, but, but Tony used to call him Brahma. So strong, like a bull. A lot Brahma. of other people did too. So did Mikey Switek. He called him Brahma. Brahma. Yeah. So, all right, let's wrap it's this like whole on. We got another another minute here. That's the way it was. And if they heard it, you know, from somebody, hey, he called you the clown, they might say, approach you and say, do I look like a clown? Just like the movie. You know, I'm telling you, okay? I hope this is helpful to all y'all. Now, I'm going to wrap it up a little bit here. 
press that my Van Gogh, that button, that subscribe button. If you don't press it, I'm gonna break your freaking thumb. <laughs> you got it? And I'll talk to you again. Having coffee with me, right? Collide. Enjoy. By the way, um, that coffee cup right there, guys. Just a side note. You ever look at it? It's like I, it's got it's it's got a uh, Bible verse on the side of it. It's a it's a, out of the Book of Matthew. Uh, I don't remember the exact verse, but that's that was outside. Right. Side. There you can maybe you can read it there. Matthew fourteen twenty three. I think of what it is. It says I love you, Papa, and then it has a Bible verse. Anyway, there you go. It's crazy. A flashback. That was before the before the lyrics were uh, written, and yeah, that was pretty wild stuff. So, uh, hey guys, let's say a quick hello, hello to everyone. Did, uh, did Frank ever apologize? Um, yeah, he apologized oh, to you. Oh, oh, yeah, oh yeah. Um, um, he did, and um, after he got mad at me once. So over over nothing, you know, it was like once, once, twice. Well, three. there was there was there was a few times there, but you know what? That was that was that was just that was Frank. Um, and guys, if you're uh, in Vegas, uh, the mob tour is going. Uh, even George from uh, Franklin Park took the tour. All right, hey, welcome back, everybody. Adam Flowers here, mob vlog, and I just got done doing another another mob tour today. This time with George. And George is from Franklin Park. What you think, George? It's great, great, very informative. You come to Vegas, make sure you do this tour. Now, George, you went and saw a show the other night. Who'd you see? Penn and Teller. And was this better than Penn and Teller? Oh, by far, way better. There way you go. Better. And I'm not even doing magic, guys. <laughs> hey, thanks again, man. I appreciate thanks, it. Thanks for having us. Have a great day, guys. Prescribe. Prescribe. <laughs> thanks again for taking the tour, George. Um, and uh, uh, wow, yeah, you guys. Um, Kevio, hey Adam, how did you get to meet Frank? Well, that's a story. Yeah, uh, uh, well, you know that when I first moved to Vegas, I was a tour guide for the Mob Tours, the first gig that I got, and uh, and that's uh, Frank was a consultant for the company, and that's how we met uh, originally, and then um, and then years later, uh, I, I became the owner of the company, and uh, and um, I should say co-owner. I have a partner. Uh, who's a producer out here in Vegas as well. And, uh, and, and yeah, st when, when, when that happened, I was, that was in 2017, 16, okay. Into 16, but, uh, the beginning of 17, man, I was gung ho with Frank. I was like, dude, like we got a, you know, you speaking engagements, this, that I wish I, I wish that the YouTube channel would have been an idea at 17. You know what I mean? That would have been, you know, could have documented more. But uh, AMC Sean, who is the boss today? Well, everybody, everybody's the boss today. You're Joe you know, Boss, your own body. <laughs> who's the boss today? Everybody's the boss. Um, uh yeah i was watching the video where frank got mad at adam i know he felt bad uh yeah anyway so that's how we met and we just it just it, the, the relationship just kind of grew and grew um and uh you know he had uh lewis his his uh friend lewis who helped him out a ton uh around and then when i would see fram i almost always saw lewis too so um yeah. Anyway, uh, Don Ciccio di Porzalo. If you hang around those type of guys long enough, you'll learn they all have a trigger and you never let your guard down. What is innocent to you may set them off. Right. Well, I learned Don that day one. <laughs> right. I was with somebody else and that was it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't... Um... <laughs> Uh, that's funny. So, uh, so you guys are all, you know, uh, putting here in the comments that the boss in Chicago is Lori Lightfoot. All right. Yeah. Which looks, looks like, um, 
man, what's that? What's that? Uh, Bruno Mars looks like a slow Bruno Mars. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever see that side by side? Oh, oh yeah. my God. Anyway, um, Sally D's the boss is what TC says. You, you guys, here's He's the thing retired. about it. Sally D is retired, period. I talked to him. He's retired. William Kirchmayer, he's the boss when his wife lets him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who's the boss today? Who's the boss today? Uh, who's the boss that was a good TV show? Who was the boss that was a good TV show? Was yeah, it was, was a good one oh, with Tony Danza, right? Is there any mob left today? So it's such a question comes up all the time. I swear, you, you know, it's... I believe there is some mobsters left today, but they're disorganized. It's not like it was where they report to somebody else. and It's not, it's not like it was years ago. That's what I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, my, Michael Hacker, Beetlejuice. <laughs> uh, Cindy Workman, I wish Joe would give tours. Yeah, you know, um, um, I tell you what, that's a, that'd be something, huh? Open oh, a yeah. tour company in Chicago. Joe Collada should take people around and show them where, uh, where this was and that. I mean, you know how many people are fasting? How many people would sign up for that in a heartbeat? Even if it was a one-time thing. Even if it was a one-off, Joe, I know you're listening. Yes. <laughs> Even if it was a one-off, you know, like a just a one-time deal. And, uh, you know. There would have been many... no competition between Calabrese and him. Calabrese wow. Jr., there wouldn't have been any competition. No. Um. So, yeah, they're good at laying low these days, uh, Jono. Exactly. You know, it, it 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 grew and grew, but the politicians took over everything. It got into the politics is what happened. It kind of migrated in there. And that's what Frank always said to me. He's like, these guys, you know, you know, you look in Washington, D.C., and they're all right. These people look make us look like we're angels compared to what they're doing. And, and also it's, in the state of Illinois and the city of Chicago – they open casinos. They they have buy here, pay there currency exchanges where they loan you money on your paycheck. So that takes the juice loans out of business. A lot of things were just legalized, and they could tax them, and that's the way they got away with it. Sure, sure. RV Doc Red. When's the last time you talked to Solly D? I saw him two weeks ago. Last year. I believe it was last, no, the year before last, year before last. He actually called me. Uh, you know, there, there, there's some, this is, there's small, there's small, uh, there's small gangs, you know, and there's, there's small gangs, uh, different uh, ethnicities, your Latin, your Latin, Russian, and Black gangs are are they're 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 you know they're disorganized. They aren't they aren't doing what uh what the what the mob was doing in the sixties and seventies. It's not organized like that at all, you know. So there's I'm nobody sure. to kick up to anymore. You don't kick up anymore like you used to back in the old days. Yeah, there, there. You got that right, Jono. <laughs> that's 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 right. They're saying uh, that. Uh, yeah, that's the main boss. The politicians took over the rackets. The politicians took the the numbers game in the '60s with the lottery. They took all the rolling craps games in the '90s when they legalized all the gaming and uh, brought the boats in. When that happened. That got rid of the video poker business. That went downhill for uh, you know the, their their uh, game, you know the in the bars. Now that's gone because now that they're like, whoa, well let's make it legal for us to just install them everywhere. So that's what they do. They install them in the poor, the poor, the poor neighborhoods. Okay, and it's, that's what they do. They put these places in and they uh, and they um, 
Oops. Sorry, guys. I had to take a glance at that. Uh, they, they put them in, and, and um, yeah, the only thing that they're missing is the prostitution. They got the marijuana. They've got, you know, all of this. So it, it's, you know, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's it's absolutely crazy. They just took a hey Red, I lost your your uh, voice. Your voice, Red. I can't hear you at all. Can you guys hear? Okay. Now, you can hear me. now you can hear me. You push that I, mute I, button. Yeah, I, I did because I had a phone call come in. Um, Don DeChi said the only thing they're missing is prostitution. Yeah, the politicians are not going to get involved in that. You know, you could go into that too, right? As to, as to who owns, when you're talking to prostitution now, who owns um, these websites, right? That offer the different, you know. Here, the here's a listing from from Europe. They put the, they on Facebook. They throw these gals up there, and you know, voluptuous gals, and they say. Something it's got a comment above every one of them, and, and then it's a different gal. But um, it'll say something like, "Am I attractive?" Hit the button, and then mm -hmm. you go to that. So, who owns that? It's not the mob. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, it's. Uh... <laughs> uh... Then you can't bring back what was gone. It's gone forever. It's, it's not, not going to come back. It's not going to be, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm reading some of your comments, guys. Ever since 9-11, Adam, the Fed's got so much technology, it's impossible to do anything. Very low key. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Major, Major Koenig, the uh, outfit in Chicago is only riding on fumes of the far past. Yes, if if that right, if that. So, well, know. they throw around their names. I'm I'm connected. I'm with the outfit. A lot of these young people do, and they're connected to who? Yeah. Oh, I'm not supposed to talk about that. <laughs> I don't want to drop any names here. <laughs> hey, Pab, we dude, we legalized marijuana, and somehow Illinois is still broke after the uh, Crook County alcohol and tobacco taxes, making you uh, essentially give them a finger for a pack of squares. Uh, it, it's crazy. It's absolutely nuts how much, and yet they're broke. They're broke. No money. You know, it went into their paychecks and their retirement funds and all their different committees that they're on. Exactly. So they can tax the people legally, like street tax, and get it through income tax, mm -hmm. which is the law. Southside, sin in America, so other countries took it over. It's, it's fucked up. It really is. Um, it, it, it really is. I mean, why, why would we even... Some of this, you know, we need to get back to... Uh, we need to be a little more self-sustaining over here uh, on our uh, chunk of land, I think. So, I think instead, so. Of, st instead of, instead uh, of, you know, uh, pushing, pushing jobs across borders, I'm not, not, not a fan of it. So, uh, especially when you walk around this country and you go, look at the people that need help, you know, look at the people that need help. Why are we, why, why, do you, I, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, we're going to go down in that hole and what's going to happen is, uh, is this video is going to end up not getting seen. Although there's a couple hundred people in here right now, which is great guys. Be sure to hit the like button. I can't believe there's only one like on Facebook. There's got to be more than one of you watching on Facebook. That's like crazy. and subscribe. <laughs> I know m most everybody's watching on YouTube. So, but be sure to hit the like button, okay, guys? And you know, subscribe, prescribe. Uh, be sure to do that. Yeah, what is wrong with putting us first? Is there's nothing wrong with that at all? Um, 
Alberto Lopez. You know what? When it you know when it all right when it comes to this, since we're going here, <laughs> when it comes to this, <clears throat> here we go. <laughs> both sides, okay, are, are are equally fucking responsible. All right, plain and simple. Both sides. You understand? If you if you're a Republican, if you're a Democrat, if you lean left, you lean right. The it doesn't make that any difference. In, you're still a politician. The people that are in there, okay, need to the fuck out. That's what needs to happen. Term That's limits. what needs to happen. Term so. limits. <laughs> no more forty years in politics. I just, yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't. Um, God, you know, I just had. It's funny. It's funny. I just interviewed, and it went up yesterday. The interview went up yesterday with uh, Maria Romano. And if you guys didn't get a chance to check it out, check it out. All right. There'll be a link in the description. Um, I'll put it in there when we're done with the video, but, but check it out. She says in the, you listen, listen to this interview and it's near the end where they're talking. She's talking about the gaming commission and I'm talking about all this investigation that was, what was done into her, um, her, 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 her dad and her stepmom and all this. It's really weird how it all, but she, she also said something that was very interesting. The gaming co commission was not really controlled by state or law. They had their own gaming commission where they could put the yay or nay on anybody. Oh, sure. The ga they make their rules. They make they're their, okay, but. They're independent. <laughs> but this was really bad what was going on, okay? They're, they're, she, her, her husband and her, her father and her brother all owned this coin company in Vegas and they had the programmer write a program to limit how many royal flushes that the machine would would give, and they had some 1,200 machines in 94 locations or something around Las Vegas, and they got all shut down. Uh, and and uh, and anyway, the the point I was trying to get to about her is that she she was talking about um, different people taking different payoffs, and they went back and looked. In the records, okay, of the what her her dad had done and where this different money was paid out to, and certain people like to get you know you know taken care of for uh, you know the gaming, and she she mentions the late Harry Reid being one. So not all angels and uh, you know sunshine and rainbows, in other words. <laughs> and now we have the Harry Reid Airport, McCarran. Okay, McCarran Airport. Greg Polly, thank you so much. Uh, do you call it the Willis Tower? No. No. Guys, in the comments, all right, because I'm, I'm serious, because I'm not going to call it that. It's going to be McCarran Airport. That's where I'll be flying in and out of, as far as I'm, you know. Yeah. Because that's what it's been called the whole time. We're going to go, go and check. It, it's, it's, all right, so in the comments, I want you to put a one if you call the Sears Tower the Sears Tower. I want you to put a two if you call it the Willis Tower. All right, I'm just curious, and don't please don't vote more than once, okay, guys? Because I really want to see. I mean, I appreciate the the comments, and it's good for the algorithms, but really, I, I want to see. Yeah, one, 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 one. Kathy Jean says one, one, bug. Courtney says one, 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 George Wilson, George Newman, one, one, Frank Ferraro, one, one, one. Yes. See, okay. Not a single two, not a single two, even Mark Hank. It was built to Sears Towers. It'll Sears always Tower. be the Sears Towers. Sears Tower. I mean, look, and that was something when it was built to that us Chicagoans were so proud of, right? We got the tallest building in the world. The Sears Tower. I'm outdated. I still call it Comiskey Park, and it's not. <laughs> right. They changed that. They changed that. Comiskey Park. And again, you know, that's yeah. uh, Mike Lino Ferrara. Thank you, Mike. Mike Lino, Mike Lino Ferrara. Thank you Mike very much. Um, yeah, Bobby Bag of Donuts. It's the BS world that we live in today. If somebody somebody finds something wrong with somebody else, somebody else's past that they don't agree with, and then everything needs to change. <laughs> and and then anything that says that it was that, get rid of it. 
okay? Because and 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 don't this never happened. It's crazy, Red. I'm watching television show. I was watching a television show, and it's so. It's a, a new show. Let me think about it. Uh, Why women kill? Okay, it's a show called Why Women Kill. Interesting show, fun. But the second season of it takes place in 1950, and nothing that would happen in 1950 happens in the show. Okay, it's like it's like 1950, but an alternate reality 1950. Okay, where there's it, it's just it's crazy crazy anyway I, I agree with you guys uh william kirchmeyer i i really uh you know i, I could see you guys are on a, a similar page uh <laughs> if not the same page uh here's a good gonna... point dab says they were going to change lakeshore drive the name is lakeshore drive yeah so LS... lakeshore drive How lsd anything else lsd baby that's right that's what i mean ah uh... It's just crazy. Hey, why did they want to change the name of Lakeshore Drive? It was a hairy idea that uh, the new city council and our mayor or their mayor decided they were going to do. Um, it's like the Obama Library that was uh, supposed to be in, uh, you know, on the south side. There, he yeah. decided to donate it. We, the taxpayers, paid for that library. Just like every president, he donated it to a community center. Why? Who knows? Chicago, Chicago. There is no place like Chicago. You guys are right. No, I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here reading this. It is not Lakeshore Drive anymore. Chicago's iconic it. Lakeshore Drive has been renamed in honor of Jean Baptiste Point du Sable who wide, is widely regarded as the city's founder. NBC 5's Mary Ann Ahern reports, Chicago unveiled the newly renamed Jean Baptiste Point du Sable Lakeshore Drive Thursday afternoon. That was October 1st, 2021. I, I don't believe back. this. I'm, I'm not going back. That's it. <laughs> I don't believe this. Are you kidding me? See, I, I haven't been back there and heard local news like this, but what the what the fuck? That's all I have to say. Seriously, why, why, what 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 planet are we on? Really, <laughs> what planet are we on? Oh, uh, God, unbelievable! What's the idea for the show next week? Oh, guys, guys, wait, wait, wait. One, one quick, quick thing. I want to make a quick announcement. Okay, so if any of you, if any of you at all have a VR headset, okay, anybody out here, and I know our audience is mainly guys between the age of me and Red. Not everybody's a video gamer and a nerd like me, okay? But um, if you have a VR headset, there's an app called Wander, and my best friend's got a headset. He lives back in uh, uh, he lives back in Chicago, Chicago land. My buddy Roy, and Roy and I found this app called Wander, and you put the headset on, and you literally you, you look around and you're in street you're in Google Street View. So like when you pull it up on the screen, you look, but you're in the picture. So you're looking around at the picture. It's really cool, and you can you can go up and down the streets in different places. Anyway, my idea is to make a video where uh, some of the prescribers and up to, I think, five can go. So there's could be six, six of us total who could um, go and check out different mob locations. We can go check out different um, uh, places and look at different uh, areas, whether it's in Vegas, whether it's in, in Chicago or Italy. It doesn't matter. OK, we can jump around. And, and I figured it would be fun. So. Um, uh yeah brew city check out the app um it's 10 bucks i think it's 10 bucks for the app so sure. and if your your headset i don't know oculus to, uh, oculus or an oculus 2 um runs it just just fine so uh, anyway it's an idea if you guys do go to the facebook page go to my personal page adam flowers 
and add me as a friend, send me a message, you know, at, you know, let's do VR. Um, so, and then, and then we can jo join together in the VR thing and, and do this wander. It's really, really cool. Uh, check it out or else that's what, uh, Joey Iupa says, <laughs> check it out or else. Wow. So, um, anyway, next week's show, you want to go do, uh, you want to go visit graves? Yes. I would love okay. to visit Grace. Okay, so, so Don Berlin wrote me. Don, who helped to come up with last week's episode, um, uh, which was great, by the way. We got to uh, interview uh, William uh, Crawford, uh, who was an investigative reporter back in the 60s for the Tribune, 60s, 70s. Anyway, it was a great episode. Um, Don came up with an idea. He emailed me and said, why not do mob stones like gravestones? Call it mob stones. Hey, that's a great idea, right? Mob stones. So uh, because we threw... brought it up to me, I said mob stones. I don't know what you're talking about. Mob stones. They said grave sites. That I understand. Right. Well, the I'm thumbnail. I'm going to make up my mind today. What when I make a thumbnail for it, people will get it, you know. But um, uh, Joey Ayoub is asking where his grave is. You should know. You're the one in it. <laughs> you know what Joey I, Joey Aupa would be doing today if he was alive? Red? Scratching at the inside of his coffin. <laughs> I'm terrible. Okay. So, um, uh, so, yeah, maybe that's what we'll do next week. Go around. There's a, what was it? Now it's, it's, um, uh, what was the other channel besides Gary Jenkins' channel and Street Stories? Who was the other one? Of the forgotten. Faces of the Forgotten, right? Yeah, he fa hits some of them, but he hits everybody celebrities, all different okay. kinds of people. But so we while I was in strictly mob guys, all right, so was was in Mark Carmel and or Queen of Heaven. I wonder if, 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 if they would be over Faces of Forgotten. I wonder if they would be okay with us showing some of their footage. You think like we did with Anthony? I Can think you, I I think he'd be okay with it. You talk to him? No, he says he he types messages to me. Nice guy. Okay, I don't know if, if you if you, I've never talked to him. So he gives shout outs to you all the time. He gives shout outs to me all the time. Oh, okay, awesome. Well, you probably wouldn't mind. You know, I you know YouTube's supposed to work together. You know what I mean? People be working together, having fun. Well, taking one frame out of, you know, what he shot so you can yeah. see that grave site and then talk about it like we did today. You can get up on the, the screen and then we could talk on the side about it. Oh, yeah, that's that's what I, I totally just like we did, did today with the old video. And while I was in Chicago, um, I, I, I uh, went around and, and took some footage of different places, too. The, you know, Al Capone's grave and Tony's grave and all the different you Jim know, sites. grave. Yeah, so so I have some of them, but I don't have all of them. I got so, Jimmy Cozos. So maybe we could bring up the grave and then talk a little bit about each one, who they were, and uh, what you know what they did, and do a little segment segments about them. So, so yeah. You want to show my grave? <laughs> yeah, you want to. You want to. <laughs> Crush it deal like a deer in the headlights be, on that one. Be, 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 be a hell of a story, but I thought we were never, ever, ever going there on this uh, with this subject. Thing. Like That's what stuff. you told me. But if you want to go there, I'm I'm game because the people that find that story <laughs> fascinating <laughs> as hell. All right, look, Red's told me a story about his life that is so freaking crazy, and he, he doesn't ever want to tell it. So you know. Yeah, Red, you got, you got a grave. I hired an investigator to go and take a picture of my grave. I actually did. Wow. That's crazy. I got Find out that you had a funeral. She's just insane. It's insane. Red's been in three plane crashes. Folks. <laughs> the, this got dark. P-A-B. This got dark. Um uh yeah so neil jones i want to see a big movie version of double cross sam giancana's book it'd be an ultimate 
mafia movie valentine's day massacre jfk assassination love this channel by the way great work thanks neil uh appreciate they've been trying to do that. that they've been trying to get a production on it yeah they have right so they were going to make a movie in chicago yes. about a cardo and who was it that came to chicago and got his ass kicked <laughs> de niro robert de, de niro. niro yeah he got worked over in uh, North Suburb. It Crazy. never made the it never made the Tribune or anything else, but that local paper, Mike Byrne, put it up in his room. Um, Chicago Outfit Past and Present News articles, and he put up the article. It was a small article about it, and when I checked into it, sure enough, there were photos and everything else. Yeah. And then De Niro went up to Canada to make it. After that, he didn't want to make it in Chicago anywhere. And then it fell in the toilet. That's it. It never it's came nice. out. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Uh, William Davidson, love this topic. Uh, knew you guys would. You know what's funny? This is this is going to be one of the better episodes, by the way. I can already tell from the numbers. But this um, uh, this will get this, this video is going to get a lot of views. Uh, and it's it's crazy because this is one of those that last minute was like, hey, uh, you know, hey. Uh, I got this idea because it's last minute. Let's just do this and let's make this thumbnail. And I guess everybody like the thumbnail. That's kind of you know that's like like seventy percent of getting somebody into the videos. The thumbnail. I've said it before, but yeah, sometimes. Uh... All right, Don Berlin. Wait until everyone sees how we tell the story about grave sites and the Uber volunteers. This is going to be a wild story. Tune in, best to everyone. Don, the showrunner. And that's what Don. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Don. He literally is like coming up with these these really cool ideas. So thanks, Don. No, I never met Sam Carlisi. Duke explain. I never met him. Gomp. De Niro deserved it. And with that, guys, it's been a lot of fun. Red, thanks so much for coming on again uh, and spending your uh, time with me uh, and, uh, and and all the prescribers today. Like You're my welcome. YouTube shirt? You too. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't got one of those. <laughs> yeah. The YouTube shirt. I got to send you the link so you can get one. That's fun. All right. Anyway, YouTube less likely to take it down if it's got their look. <laughs> I have no idea, guys. Happy Christmas. <laughs> I actually got this for Frank. He wore it in one video. He wore it live. I in saw one that. Yeah. I yeah. You only that. saw it like from here up, though. But yeah, uh, I got it for Frank. Anyway, so uh, it's been fun, Scott guys. H wants an after show. <laughs> after show? Scott H wants after show? You doing an after show, Red? I can, but I, <laughs> I'm not set up for it. I didn't plan on it. You want to help me set it up on your end? Now nah, let's you do get, it. You get time. We'll do another it time. Time. Okay. Okay. Um, no after so, show today, guys. <laughs> so uh, anyway, guys, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a good time. And uh, and and you know what? We're gonna outro this uh, with a little uh, a little Bohemian Rhapsody. How's that for you? Hey, sounds good. Right. You're good on those ivories. Eighty-eight keys. Yeah, on the I, I'm gonna tinkle them. All right, guys, it's been fun. My vlog.